feel the hoverings of the Holy Ghost. Bokratov, good morning, friends. Hallelujah. We are heading into the ancient port city of Kasaria to discover and unveil to you this morning a mystery in the sea. Stay tuned. Hallelujah. Woo, glory. Shalom, friends. We greet you here from Israel. Mega and Rav Shalom to you. Hallelujah. I want you to sit back, get a drink. Glory to God. And just from your computer monitors or your LCD, plasma TVs, I want you to just meditate on these images you're about to see. We're here to do a special documentary on the mystery that is in the sea. A mystery, something that has been hidden. The mystery I'm talking about and the images you'll see is that the Lord began to speak to me um, as I was a, a, a Bible student, as I was in a place of hanging out with the Lord, hallelujah, in the bowels of a learning resource center, a, the archives, the greatest archives um, anywhere on earth located at the Pentecostal Historical Museum and the archives. And I was in the belly of that, that learning resource center in the States, and I was studying about the old revivalists. And the Lord began to speak to me, go back even further. Don't just study, you know, past revivals. Don't just study past moves of my spirit go back to the very foundations hallelujah of the promised land it's in the scriptures it's not in church history because i tell you behold i do something new now it shall spring forth if you not be aware of it i'll make rivers in the desert it is a sudden flash flood hallelujah that god always takes people by surprise that he may show himself to be god and we're mere dust amen so in this mystery we're about to bring forth i was studying and i began to read an archaeological report in that resource center many years ago, uh, 50, excuse me, 20, 22 years ago, and it talks about this archaeologist uh, finding certain stones in this port and the amazing port city that Herod had built here, the largest of its kind in the ancient world. It took him 12 years to build that. And in this place, they were amazed by the techniques of the engineering of the Romans and how they had special volcanic rock that would turn into seamen underwater, and how they built this incredible huge port. Now, in that study, I began to hear the Spirit of God, okay? And I immediately thought of the words of Yeshua in Mark 11, where he comes into the temple complex. They did not receive him, okay? He came back, he cursed the fig tree. It dried from its roots up. The next day, they returned to the Temple Mount area. And Peter said, Lord, look at the fig tree you cursed. It's withered. And Yeshua, the Messiah, said, whoever says to this mountain, he didn't say have faith in God, whoever says to this fig tree. He said, whoever says to this mountain. Why was he talking about the mountain? Because the fig tree was a representation of life, of blessings, of the menorah. The knobs on the menorah in the second temple period was a representation of the fig tree. He cursed the fig tree because he went into the place his father had ordained. It was a house of prayer for all nations. It had all the utensils, all the things that we were commanded as Jewish people to, to be custodians of the glory, okay? The Kohanim, the priests, the Levites. But those utensils, those items were being used as a den of thieves instead of a house of prayer for all nations. And Yeshua cursed the fig tree as a sign of cursing the fruitfulness of that system. And then he says, whoever says to this mountain, be removed and cast into sea. The faith that Yeshua was using, that he wants us to enjoin with him, is not against physical mountains. It's not against just mountains in your life, financial problems. We're talking about mountains of religious epicenters that hold back the Lord, glory of God from his people, that keep from all the nations from knowing the glory. And he cursed that system. Now, we know roughly 40 years later, Titus came in, destroyed Jerusalem, carried the artifacts out. They brought them here to this port, to the sea, okay, and carried them off to Rome. And we know in this time of great tragedy with the Jewish people, 
that there arose a move of the Spirit in this place, that the move of the Spirit may go out to the Gentiles, to the sea. Enjoy these images as we begin to speak to you. Hallelujah. What the mystery is to see. We also have some footage of going underwater with an archaeologist examining these huge pieces of construction underwater that has the last 25 years has been excavated here to the amazement of Israeli archaeologists. Hallelujah. Glory to God. God's doing something new. Tune in. Here we go. God graced this spontaneous operation today into the Caesarean Harbor in the Mediterranean with beautiful clarity and visibility underwater. The archaeologist was surprised how clear and calm it was today. Abnormal for a very stormy and violent Mediterranean ocean at times. We first come upon the remains of a steamship that was used to bring in Jewish immigrants fleeing Nazi Europe. The mysteries of what happened on this boat, only God really knows. This is the passion of the Israelis to uncover their past. We continue to go along a predetermined route, and we come upon what's just been recently rediscovered, huge Roman stones built for this harbor. The account of Josephus about a great harbor that Herod the Great had built a few years before Jesus was born are shown before us even now. This is remains of the Roman sidewalk, even a burial platform for those who were rich and wealthy. We now move upon the outer wall underwater here. Huge, the scale of this project is just mind-boggling. This dive was only 62 minutes in length, and we we're only able to explore one-third of the harbor. What other mysteries does this place contain? One of the mysteries that was found was the archaeologists discovered anchors from the 2,000 years ago used by the Romans. But also what discovered was Middle Bronze Age and Late Bronze Age type anchors that were used by the boats here as represented by the stone to the left with the two holes in it. Ancient anchors from an ancient time of great commerce activity in this harbor. This was the major port. This was, the, so to speak, the Ben Gurion airport of the ancient world of Rome that brought in and out commerce from Israel throughout the Mediterranean Empire. Here, as we're going in the spectacularly rare clear water, juvenile tuna began to swim and storm around us. As we go into the outer fringes of the breakwater, we again discover huge Roman stones. These stones were found to be made up of volcanic ash imported from Italy, mixed with different sand and limestone, and would harden underwater, something that was not discovered until just recently by Israeli archaeologists. Another mystery comes forth. As we're searching along here, the mystery becomes evident. Less than 10% of this harbor and the area of Kassaria has even been excavated, and 90% still remains unknown to us. Israelis like to leave some of these unknown things to the next generation. Perhaps they'll have better technology to discover what is here. In terms of underwater archaeology, when a storm comes up, many storms hit this area, sand shift, there's no telling what mystery will be unveiled by the shifting sands and the storms and the raging currents that will come against this area in the days ahead. Perhaps it will show us even more of the mysterious words of Yeshua. Whoever speaks to this mountain be removed and cast into the sea. Logic dictates 